In this video, we'll discuss Layer 3 functions. Layer 3 of the OSI model corresponds to the network layer, and the network layer is responsible for logical addressing and routing functions. So some of the responsibilities of Layer 3 are to know the addresses of neighboring devices, to select the best routes and the quality of service, and to recognize and forward incoming messages to the transport layer components. There's a wealth of different functionality that's provided by the network layer, and it all surrounds around two core functions, and that first function is logical addressing. Logical addressing is not only the assignment of IP addresses, but also the mathematical operations that help us determine whether a system exists on the network or off the network, and where do we send that information if we need to reach the destination system? So that's all part of logical addressing. The other function, or other major function, I should say, of layer three is routing aspects. So routing is the concept of forwarding the data or moving that data you know, across networks. So when a user on one network needs to communicate with a user on another network, the Layer 3 device, which is a router, is responsible for sending that traffic from the first network over to the second network. There's a number of other Layer 3 functions, and those include things like datagram encapsulation, fragmentation in, of the packets and reassembly of the packets itself, error handling and diagnostics are all part of the functionality of Layer 3. Now, when we talk about Layer 3 and Layer 3 devices, we always talk about a router. So routers are layer three devices and they're responsible for routing or delivering the traffic from one network over to another network. Now it should be noted as the slide is mentioning here is that another example of a device that could be layer three is a switch. Now typically I would classify switches as layer two devices unless documentation specifically mentions that it is a layer three switch. So there are layer three switches, but what's funny about layer three switches is essentially the routers as well, right? So layer three switches would have routing functionality added to them. So instead of you going out and purchasing, you know, a router to connect to the, let's say the WAN environment, and then to purchase a switch so that your client computers can connect to the switch and the switch connects to your router, what you could do is go out and just buy a layer three switch, which would perform the functions of the layer two device, which is just connectivity in the LAN. And then it also provides functionality of the layer three device, which is routing across networks. So that's something that we can do as well is purchase those layer three switches, they're called. Some layer three device considerations that should be made. First thing that's important to understand about layer three devices and routers is they restrict broadcast traffic. So if a user is over here, let's say this client computer is connected to, uh, there'd be a switch here, which is connected then to the router. When this guy sends out a broadcast message, that broadcast message would come up, it would hit the switch that's connected right here. That broadcast message would then go to any systems that are connected to that switch. And then it would also travel along the wire that hits this router. Now the point here is that the layer three devices, they typically do not forward broadcast based traffic. So the broadcast message would stop at that layer three device or that router, preventing other networks from receiving that broadcast message. So that's a good thing because broadcast traffic is definitely a lot of chatter on the network and you wouldn't want that to spread across different companies' networks. So the layer three device creates this broadcast domain here, which is kind of a boundary for broadcast messages. So when I look at this diagram, I see two broadcast domains. Here's a broadcast domain on the right-hand side of the rotor, so this LAN over here, and then this network over here is another broadcast domain. So any broadcast messages that are sent on the left-hand side will stay on the left-hand side. Any broadcast messages on the right-hand side would stay on the right-hand side. So that's a huge benefit of those layer three devices, they restrict broadcast traffic. And, and there's a number of different types of broadcast traffic. We have ARP messages and DHCP broadcast messages. So any broadcast messages. 
The Layer 3 device also provides connectivity between different networks and, and host on those networks as well. So it's a very, very important device. So in this video, we discussed Layer 3 functionality.